episode 17 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy and I am coming to you from eastern Nebraska where I live on a farm with my husband and our five children. This is a podcast all about my life as a knitter, a crocheter, and a hand dyer of yarn. Thank you so much for joining me today. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts, on Ravelry at Noble Character, and I also have a group for this podcast on Ravelry under Noble Character Crafts Podcast. In that Ravelry group, you'll be able to find the show notes for this episode and previous episodes, as well as several chatter threads. So please join us over there if you would like. I am hosting a make-along right now, which is called the I Think I Can Make-Along, and it is for any craft that you would like to try your hand at that may be intimidating to you. So this would be for any craft and or any particular skill within a craft um, that you have never tried before and is a little bit scary, and this could just be your um, push to give that a try. So I, for example, am trying brioche and I hope to try a sticking project as well during this make along. It started on February 1st and it is going until April 30th. So please uh, join us in the, there's both a chatter thread as well as a finished object thread for you to enter any of the projects that you have completed. And I would love to have you join us over there and also to join in any of the chatter. If you have any expertise that you can help others with, that would be great to um, encourage others along as they are trying new things. And or if you have any questions for a project that you would like to try your hand at, that is the place that you can um, chatter with other members of the Ravelry group that are joining in. So I would love to have you if you'd like to join in. If there are any makers out there that would be willing to donate a prize for this make-along, I would really appreciate any um, donations for that. You can get in contact with me through my email, which is noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. So today is Friday, March 2nd, 2018, and I am so excited to be with you again today. I don't have any finished objects today, but I do have one half object. This project is in my Tuft Woolens project bag, and I am absolutely loving working on this. This pattern is the Rhinebeck is Calling Fingerless Mitts by Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. And I have one completed so nice. I am, I'm really surprised with how much, I mean, I knew I was going to love this pattern. I thought it was gorgeous, but I've uh, never had, a, well, I've never made a knitted fingerless glove before. I've made lots and lots of crocheted fingerless gloves. And whenever I have done that, I've always used worsted weight. And this uses fingering weight. And I don't know, I just feel like it's just so comfortable on the hand. And I mean, it literally feels like I'm wearing a sock on my hand, which makes sense because, you know, it's made out of the same weight yarn, but it just hugs the hand so comfortably. And I was also afraid that it would be too tight on me because I have very large hands for a girl and there's nothing to compare them to, but they're pretty large. And um, so, you know, the, the size that I made is the medium large size. There's also, I believe, a small medium size. Um, but I obviously went with the medium large size and I thought, oh, I hope it's not too tight. Oh, also because in the pattern, it gives you dimensions for the medium large size and it goes up to, I think, eight and a half inches in circumference around the hand. And my hand measures nine inches. So it's only half an inch, but I thought, oh, I wonder if these are gonna be too tight, but they're they're just so comfortable. I love them so much. There's this pretty lace pattern that goes down the um, front of the hand, or the back of the hand, I guess. 
and that is just like um, the pattern that she had made for her Rhinebeck is Calling sock pattern. So that's why these are called the Rhinebeck is, Rhinebeck is Calling Fingerless Mitts. And uh, I am using my own hand dyed yarn on my new Gentle base, which is 100% non-superwash fine merino wool. And I am using my Deep Waters colorway. This is the first time I've used this base and I'm absolutely loving it. And I have started the second one. I've just passed the ribbing and have done one repeat of the lace pattern. These are on size two needles, which are 2.75 millimeter. And these are my, these are chow goos. All of my needles that I use are chow goo red lace needles, which I love. These have worked up so quickly um, because they're a little bit larger needle and um, you know it's not as many stitches as you would have for a sock. So compared to a sock, they just whip, whip up so quickly. But then actually, <laughs> I had written that on a recent post on Instagram that these work up so quickly and then comparing them to the countless fingerless mitts that I have made crochet using worsted weight and crocheting them, you know, those work up even faster, but I'm just comparing it to making a sock and compared to making a sock, these work up so quickly. Anyway, I'm super excited to get the second one done and have these to wear. They're just perfect for, you know, early or late winter, early spring, cool mornings. And I think I'm going to get so much use out of them. I just absolutely love the design. So beautiful design. Thank you so much, Kay, for this pattern. It's absolutely gorgeous. Love it so much. Hopefully I'll be able to get that done pretty quickly. The second, the second glove will go, or mitt will go so quickly, I'm sure. And I will hopefully have those to wear soon. Okay, my second work in progress is in my beautiful corduroy project bag from Tanai Casey, I think is how you pronounce it. And in here is my contribution for the I Think I Can Make Along which is my brioche hat. This is the flaming beanie pattern by Elisbetta Torek, I think. I'll put it down below. And um, this has uh, just been such a slow process. Um, it's in worsted weight, but man alive, this is taking me forever, it seems like. But anyway, it is my first brioche project, so I guess I should not be too hard on myself, but it just seems like it's taking forever. I am using my own hand dyed yarn again on my, um, also my new, another new base. This is my caring base, which is a worsted weight, 100% non-superwash merino wool. And I'm again using my deep waters colorway because I want it to go along with the fingerless mitts and uh, also my Sings colorway. And let's see, this Progress Keeper, which is from Mary Ann of Rock Islander, is marking where I was last time I showed it to you. And yeah, I mean, I'm just plugging along. Um, but it's brioche and it's cables, so it is kind of a slow process. I just thought that since it was worsted weight, it would work up quickly, but no, that's not the case. I have had a few mistakes. They're not horrible, but there are a few mistakes and all of them are at the beginning of the round. So I don't know why that is exactly. I just keep having problems right at the beginning of the round. And I'll show you just so you can see. So this yellow strand right here should not be over. I think I had the yarn in the wrong spot when I started a new round. I think that's why that's there. And then I have the same thing on the inside with this blue strand right here. That should not be there. And then I had some drop stitches, just a few rows back right here. And that was a horrible mess. I have, I was two stitches short on my stitch count. Oh, there's still a drop stitch. crazy. Am I going to be able to fix that? And of course I didn't put a lifeline in. 
Oh my word. What do I do? Oh, that stinks. Ugh. Well, anyway, I'll fudge it. <laughs> I'll fudge it. Ah! Anyway. Oh my word, that's so crazy. Well, anyway. I'll be glad when this is completed. I mean, it's a good learning process, but it's been a bit stressful too. <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful though. If you just look here and not on my side where I keep making all these mistakes, I really love the pattern. It's beautiful. And it does fit. I've been able to try it on. The ribbing is one by one ribbing. And it's very comfy when I've tried it on. So I probably am going to get it done just in time for spring when I don't need a hat anymore. But it'll keep till next winter. Anyway. Ah, I can't believe that. Okay. Anyway, moving on. It'll be all right. Okay. These are on size five needles, which are 3.75 millimeter. And it says that you can just kind of work the pattern well, I don't really understand how many times I'm supposed to work the pattern according to the, it just says work until you have so many rows, but I don't even know how to count the rows on brioche. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to repeat the cable pattern, which, um, let's see, I've done two repeats, I believe. I believe that this is one repeat. I think, wait, one, two, three, oh, I've done it three times. Anyway, I think I'm going to do it one or two more times before I start decreasing for the top and hopefully decreasing brioche won't be a disaster. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> anyway. It's beautiful though. I mean, I really do love the look of it, but ah, it's a little, a little stressful to work on it or to keep making so many mistakes anyway. Okay. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> The next project I have uh, is in my beautiful, my favorite project bag, which was made by Mary Ann of Rock Islander. And inside is my Lily cardigan, which I absolutely love. And this is going very well. I haven't had any problems with this. <laughs> I am using Knit Picks Palette yarn on the Aurora Heather colorway. It is a fingering weight, 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And, let's see. Okay. Last time I showed this to you, I was right there where that progress keeper is showing you. This progress keeper is so cute, but it's hard. There we go. It is from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. And so I have worked, I think about five inches there. And let's see. Okay, there you can see it a little bit better. So it is meant to be uh, quite long. So I am going to work, I think, about another, I think maybe another seven inches or so before I do the ribbing. I will just keep trying it on to see. Um, but I want it quite long so that it will um, go down past my backside and um, I think I'll get a lot of use out of it if it's longer. It has these cables that go down both sides of the front as well. So I just really enjoy working on this and yeah, I just love everything about it. The feel of this yarn is so, I really have enjoyed working with this yarn so much. It's the first time I've used Knit Picks palette and I've really enjoyed it. These are on size six needles, which are four millimeter. And yeah, oh, I'm sorry, this pattern is by Amy Self Lindland of Amy's Little Kingdom. And I absolutely love it. There is a cow going on for this, um, this pattern until the end of March. Thankfully, she extended it because she had at first thought that she would end it at the end of February. And of course, I'm not done with it yet. So I'm hoping that I will get done with it this month so that I will be able to enter it into the finished object thread for her knit along. Anyway, I am absolutely loving it. That cable pattern, so pretty. 
Love it. All right. Everything that I am making, all of my whips are for me, which is a little strange because I have been doing a few things that are gift knitting, but right now I don't have anything that is not for me. I guess it's kind of nice. <laughs> The next whip I have is in my Allison Barnes collection project bag. And this is the Doodler Shawl by Stephen West. And I am doing this along with Christy Glass Knits. She is hosting a Doodler Cal, which um, is intended to only be worked on on Sundays, which is what I'm doing. I only work on this project on Sundays. So let's see here. Here it is so far. Oh, that's hard to hold up. I'll try holding it there. That's a little hard to see, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I need three hands. Kind of. <laughs> All right, so um, I am done with this main section here with these. I think they look like sun rays going out and this lighter color. And now I, last time I podcasted, I was right there where this little pumpkin pie progress keeper, which is also from little Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. That marks where I was last time I podcasted. And so on Sunday, I was able to get several more of these cables done along the side here. So as you can see, I'm just working back and forth with this darker color to make the cables and then that will go all the way to the end here and then it has like this little flare at the end and then you start working a border along the bottom. I again am using my own hand dyed yarn on my radiant base which is 70% superwash merino and 30% silk. This lighter color that I'm already done using now is called embrace and then this deep orange color is called Enriched. And then I will work the border in my Honor colorway, which is a deep purple. So I'm super excited. I'm hoping that um, this upcoming Sunday I'll be able to finish the cabling and hopefully maybe even work on to the next section. We'll see how much time I have. But I'm really loving this. I love the eye cord. All along the edge there's an eye cord. And I just really enjoy that look. You see it? So pretty. And this one smells so good because it has my favorite tufted woolens soap in my project bag, which is the Plum and Amber. And it's my favorite. I haven't actually used it to wash anything. As you can see, it's still in the packaging, but the smell of it in here is so amazing. Anyway. I think that's all. Oh, um, these are on, this is on size four needles, which are 3.5 millimeter. And I'm just really enjoying this. So I think that's pretty good. I think there's been eight Sundays this year so far. So, or since the cow started, I don't think maybe, maybe there was one Sunday before we started, but anyway, I worked on this for eight days only. So that's pretty good. I thought for that amount of work that I've gotten into it. And there's been a couple of Sundays when I haven't had a lot of time to knit. So pretty happy with that progress. Okay, my next work in progress is in uh, my Creative Frenzies project bag. And oh, I have a sticker of a frog. <laughs> I have five young children, so there's always random things showing up in my project bags, or on my project bags. And, okay, and here are my socks that I am working on. Okay, I'm doing these two at a time, so it's always kind of a tangle to <laughs> get them out. But last time I uh, recorded an episode, I was right here where this Annette, again, a progress keeper from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. This is so sweet. I thought it went well with these colors in here. <laughs> it just reminded me kind of of summertime and ice cream. 
Anyway, um, last time I showed you this, I only had one of the cuffs done, um, and then I hadn't worked the second cuff yet. So the cuffs are in my new healing colorway that I um, collaborated with Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast to come up with this colorway for breast cancer um, research. Um, we are donating 50% of our proceeds for both this colorway and her new Katie's Socks uh, pattern. Any proceeds that we get, 50% uh, of our proceeds are being donated to breast cancer research. So that is that colorway. Again, it's called Healing. And then for the main body of the sock, I am using Knit Picks Felici in the Hopscotch colorway. So I still have yet to come to this yellow color and then it will repeat again with this light, like a sage green. Um, so anyway, I'm really enjoying these. I am using the blueberry waffles pattern for the texture, um, but ju it's just, um, you know, I think that uses a different weight of yarn and a different stitch count, but I am just using the pattern. It's just a four row repeat for, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry for the blueberry waffle socks. Um, but I am really enjoying working on these and I really love the texture. This is the first time I've used this pattern and I'm really enjoying it. It's easier for me to work up a sock that has a pattern on it than to do just a plain stockinette sock. So I'm really enjoying this. I am planning to, um, work the entire sock without putting in a heel and then going back in and putting in an afterthought heel using a new sock pattern that, um, or new, a new afterthought heel pattern that I learned about after watching the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast, which is a new to me podcast um, that I have really enjoyed watching. And they went through on their, um, a couple episodes ago, they went through a, quite a few different heel patterns um, and talked about them. And there was a new uh, afterthought heel pattern that I'd never seen before that Deborah from that podcast had just tried on a pair of socks. And I want to give that a try as well. So that's my plan. So I am really enjoying working on these. And I don't, I, they're kind of my travel knitting, so I don't work on them very much. But um, whenever I'm going in the car, I'll take these with me. All right, and then my last whip, I just wanted to show you quickly, is my excavation afghan, just because I have worked a few uh, rows on this since I podcasted last. Not a ton, but a few. These are just in a basket. I have my scraps in them. And so last time I showed you this, I was there where that progress keeper is, been able to work, I don't know, maybe nine rows since I showed you last. It's getting bunched up on this cord. I should go up to a longer cord. Let's see if I can stretch it out without dropping any stitches. Kind of. <laughs> anyway, I really love this pattern. It is a free pattern on Ravelry as well. And you just start at this end, work across and back again, increasing at the beginning of each row. And then you leave the beginning and end of your strand to make fringe at the end of your blanket. So I am absolutely loving working on this. It's so much fun. It's easy and, um, you know, it's mindless, but it's not very easy to travel with it because you have to take all your scraps along with you. So I haven't been traveling with this, but, um, it's what I want, what I use when I'm watching TV with our family. So anyway, those are all of the whips that I have worked on this week. So um, I think I'll do uh, the giveaway prizes now. So last time I podcasted, I announced that I was going to be doing a giveaway for two of Kay's of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast patterns that she generously donated to the podcast. The first one is her Ryan Beck is Calling Fingerless Mitts. And that also will come along with one skein of my hand dyed yarn. You can choose any colorway or um, base that you would like. And the winner of, thank you so much to all of those that entered. And the first winner is number 18, which is Vin Girl. Um, her name is Michelle. So congratulations to you. 
The question I had asked in the Ravelry group for this thread was if you could win a medal in any Olympic event, what would you choose? And she chose figure skating, which so many people did, and that's what I would choose too. That's actually the only Olympic event that I actually that I watch <laughs> or that I watched. Um, in the Summer Olympics, I pretty much only watch gymnastics, and in the Winter Olympics, I pretty much only watch figure skating. I mean, it's on quite often in our house. I love having it on, but the one that I really watch and pay attention to is figure skating. I've watched it ever since I was a little girl with my mom, so. Anyway, um, Michelle, congratulations. If you could please get in contact with me through Ravelry, message me, and I would be glad to um, get the pattern sent over to you through Kay. Or Kay will send it over to you and then I will and let me know what colorway you would like from my shop and what base you would like it on and I will be glad to get that out to you as well. And the second winner is number six which is four generations. Her name is Amy as well and she chose snowboarding as her sport. Congratulations Amy. Again if you could get in contact with me that would be great and you are winning the Katie's sock pattern from Kay and then also a skein of my hand dyed yarn. So congratulations, thank you so much to everyone who entered. And again, thank you so much to Kay for donating those patterns, they're so beautiful. Also, again, <laughs> this is the third time now that I'm trying to give away this last prize for the cable cowl that wrapped up at the beginning of February. And, um, both times I've announced the winner for this prize, they have not, the winner has not gotten in contact with me. So hopefully third time we will get a winner to claim the prize. So this prize for the Cable Cal is a skein of 100% alpaca yarn in a natural brown color. It is a DK weight and it is from Rolling Wood Alpaca Farm. And it also comes with a Cable Needle Necklace from Lindsay Wynn, or Le Leslie Wind. And it also comes with these beautiful Progress Keepers from Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. Oh, they're so cute. I love them. So, can we get a winner to claim this prize? <laughs> the winner is number 46, which is Tina of Miss TTSE is what she is on Ravelry, but she is also Tina Say Knits on Instagram, which I um, follow her. And I'm so excited that you won, Tina. Congratulations. She made a Bracken hat, which is absolutely gorgeous. Congratulations, Tina. Please get in contact with me through Ravelry, and I will be glad to get these off in the mail to you. Make sure you give me your mailing address, of course, and your full name for all of the winners. Okay, some new um, things I want to show you. The first is I got, I think, three of these skeins of Knit Picks Lindy Chain um, in the Sagebrush colorway. I haven't ever tried this yarn before. It is a fingering weight, 70% linen and 30% cotton. I've never made, I've never worked with linen before, so I'm super excited to try this. A lady at church asked me to make a baby garment for, um, I think it's her nephew or something that just had a baby, um, but it was born in December or January and she wanted me to make a summery outfit that the baby could wear for this upcoming summer. So that's why we went with this linen and cotton blend so that it would be appropriate for summer and I'm making a lacy dress pattern. I forget the name of the designer, but I'll put it down below here. Um, and so anyway, I'm hoping to cast that on this week. Um, I think that color is so beautiful and the pattern is very pretty as well. So I'm excited to get started on this for her. And then um, I also wanted to show you um, just because I had used this colorway in my time trades shawl that I, finished a couple of weeks ago. And I had mentioned this quite a while back when I was working on that, that this colorway, which I had called Steadfast, had given me a little bit of trouble in just getting the formula right for dyeing this colorway to get it a consistent color. But I finally have figured that out. And this colorway is now in my Etsy shop. Again, it is called Steadfast. 
So I just wanted to show that to you in case you were interested in that colorway at all. It's just a nice um, brownish red color. And then I wanted to share with you my shawl kit for this week. It actually includes four skeins instead of three is what I usually show you. But every week I try to show a set, a shawl kit set from my shop that, I mean, I don't sell them as shawl kits necessarily. I do have a few kits in my shop, but these colors are not sold as a kit, but I just try to put together a set of at least three skeins to show you that would work as a shawl kit. Anyway, <laughs> so my uh, pick for this week is these four colorways, which I am so excited about. The beautiful Cam of Hand Knit by Cam gifted me one of her patterns, the Transitions Shawl. I'll insert that here. And I am so excited to cast this on. So here I have a couple of new colorways as well as I am testing out a few, a couple of new um, bases as well. So let me walk you through all these. <laughs> This first one is not a new colorway, and of course it's gonna get blown out, but these are all really light in color. There, that's pretty good. So it's just a light base with very light brown specks. And this is my thought colorway. This is on my favorite of the two bases that I'm testing out. It is an MCN base, so 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And I have never worked with an MCN base before, and it is so amazing. It's just so soft and luxurious feeling. It's amazing. I definitely think that I will be ordering this next time I order some yarn to dye because I am just so much in love with it. Of course, I already have quite a few bases, but I just love it so much. So I think, I think I'm planning on adding this. Anyway, this will be the main color of the shawl. And then um, the next color I'm gonna use is this new colorway, and it is this light peach. Oh, I wish it wasn't blowing out so badly, but there. It's such a pretty shade of peach, I think. I love it. This is on my pitter patter base. So all four of these are on a different base. So I think that might be interesting to work with to have the different bases in it. This is called Humble. I love it so much. I was just in the mood to have a shawl that was very light and springy. The next colorway is another new colorway called Integrity. This is on my Twinkle Toes base, which is my Gold Stellina. So 75% Superwash Merino. 20% nylon and 5% gold stellina, and it is lightly speckled with brown and a coral color. There you can kind of see some there, that's better. And I'm excited to have just a little bit of sparkle in the shawl. And then the last color I'll be using is my Good Sense colorway, and this is also on a new base that I'm trying out, which is 70% uh, superwash merino, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. So this is lovely too, but I just think that the regular MCN base is um, much, it feels softer to me than this one. This one has a little bit of more shine to it because of the silk, of course, but, and it's lovely. It's still a lovely base, but I not planning on adding this right now anyway, but it's still lovely. So I am just so excited to cast this on. So the order of them will go like this. Oh my goodness, I am so excited to have this. I actually couldn't decide um, what order to put them in and so I had made a couple of coloring drawings. <laughs> I colored a couple of drawings to see um, what order I wanted to put them in. And I think I'm going, even though this drawing is a little bit neater, <laughs> just in the way I drew it. But I, um, the way that the brown is more, it really defines the lines on this one. I'm gonna go with the top one because I like how it's more subtle. And that's really what I was going for. So I think I'm gonna go with the 
um, using the peach a little bit more than the brown really and then but then you end with the a row of the brown so anyway that's my thought so I just thought I would show that in case you ever have an issue like that where you're just trying to decide how to place your colors in a project it's kind of fun just to get out some colored pencils and try to see which one you think looks better all right, I think that is all I have for today. We have been doing really well here. The kids have been able to get outside a lot more lately because the weather has really warmed up. Um, it's a muddy, muddy mess outside. <laughs> so um, I've been doing a lot of laundry, but that's okay. It's super nice to be able to get out and get some fresh air. Um, we have a little creek that just runs to the north of our house and the kids have been playing down in the creek and. I had just bought a new pair of rubber boots for my five-year-old boy and the first time he wore them he went down to the creek and stood in the creek and got them full of mud and dirty water. <laughs> Such a boy. <laughs> uh, we have four boys and only one girl which is sandwiched in the middle of our four boys. So there is a lot of rambunctious goings on around here, but it's okay. They are boys and we live out in the country and so they get to be as carefree as they can possibly be, which is wonderful. Anyway, we are just enjoying the warmer weather and looking forward to spring. We have had signs of spring. There's been tons of birds going through lately. We have like yesterday while we were doing schoolwork, I homeschool our children, and while we were doing schoolwork, all of a sudden this really loud noise of birds was outside our window and we looked up and the tree was just covered in these blackbirds that must be migrating through or something and they're so loud they're still here today um they were outside down by the creek we could hear them and then um the tur we always have wild turkeys that go around our house so they and i think it must be mating season or something because right now we have four toms and they display their big feathers and they're so beautiful they don't always do that um but they're always they are always around our house they just meander around our house and they roost up in our trees by our creek a lot of times and anyway right now the guys are showing off which is really cool <laughs> and then also we saw a flock of geese heading north this morning which was so exciting now that is a true sign of spring we haven't seen any robins yet that's what I always say is the first sign of spring but geese heading north that's definitely a sign of spring so we are looking forward to that for warmer weather and getting outside more and more and getting as muddy as we possibly can <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And if you would subscribe to this channel, if you'd like, that would be great as well. Thanks again so much for joining me. Bye.